have to disappear and we have to learn the godly things to do. So what we were doing before we got saved, we got to change. Some of the people we were hanging out with, we got to change. Everybody can't go on your journey. God has a journey for each and every one of us. He's placed gift qualities and talents in us. Everybody can't go down the road that you're going. Some of them you're going to have to leave on the bus stop. Amen. You got to leave them behind. They can't go. They can't go. Because see, they measure their faith. So now, look up. God gave everybody a measure of faith. So verse uh, for 1 Corinthians 10, 13, we show where he was always able to make a way for you to escape, right? So a lot of time, God allow you to go through something because he wants to stretch your faith, stretch your faith, because he know in a few months, you're going to need some of this kind of faith. But he got to let you go through this stuff and count on him so that as you go through it, you grow through it. And then you're able to handle that thing that's going to happen to you a year later that he already know about. But he got to get you there. So he got to get you to trust on him to get you out of it. That's why you have to put on a new man because you think different and you respond different because you got some new information. That's why it's so important to renew your mind. Amen. Greetings and welcome to another broadcast of Grow to Go Christian Center. My name is Assistant Pastor Herman Alexander Sr. And today we're going to continue our teaching on putting on the new man. OK, so grab your Bibles, your pens, your markers, call up a friend, let them know Pastor Herman's back on again with another powerful teaching in Jesus name. Now, I'm going to pray and then we're going to have a praise worship song for one of my praise team. And then I'll come back and teach the word. All right. Heavenly Father, thank you and praise you for your word. This is the day you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, Father, for another opportunity to administer these your sheep. I pray that revelation knowledge flows freely, unhindered, undistracted, uninterrupted by any satanic or demonic force. For it is in Jesus name I pray. Satan, I break your powers over the message, over the people. You cannot hinder them from receiving the words and the blessings of God. You cannot hinder the service. We bind every spirit of distraction, confusion, division, rebellion, rejection, false doctrine, false revelation, and every evil and wicked hindering spirit that would attempt to disrupt the service. In the name of Jesus, I release you demon spirits from your assignments over us. Loose you in the outer darkness, never to return again in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, I decrease for your increase. All of you, none of me. I step back so you may step forward, manifesting yourself as the teacher through myself to you, the vessel, bringing forth revelation, knowledge, and spiritual understanding for our spiritual growth and maturity, taking us all to the next level in life and ministry in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, I give you all the praise, all the honor, all the glory, and all the adoration for what will be accomplished and what will be revealed through the teaching of your word in the mighty, masterless name of Jesus. And every heart said, Amen and amen. Now we're going to have a praise and worship song, and I'll be back to teach the word.
teaching on last week, putting on the new man in Christ. So if you didn't take notes, take notes today because I got some new information God gave me. He even changed it again this morning before I left. So I'm always open to God's change because it's his church and his message. Amen. So putting on the new man in Christ, foundation scriptures or Ephesians chapter four, verse 17 through 24 and Colossians three. Verses 1 through 10, Ephesians 4, 17 through 24, and Colossians 3, 1 through 10. Now, we said the purpose of the message was to reveal to the believer God's plans and desires for everyone that receives salvation. See, after the new birth, it's not just, okay, I'm saved now and I just do what I want to. No, no, he got some plans and some desires for you. But you got to find out what that is. So you have to communicate to God. So that means I got to build a relationship with God. I got to talk to him on a regular basis. Amen. We also said our goal and objective was that the believer will follow God's instructions for change. And allow God's desires to become the believer's desires. Why? So that God can accomplish his will in the earth realm. OK, God got a plan in the earth realm. He just not Jesus didn't die just for you to get saved and go to heaven. God got a plan. But guess what? He can't do it by himself. God can't come on the earth and do anything. He needs some assistance because of the way he instituted the plan. If you look at uh, let's just look at uh, let's go to school. Look at Genesis chapter one. Genesis chapter one. 
Drop down to verse 26. It says, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God gave man dominion over all the earth. And God is not going to violate his word. Once he set it into motion, it's done. So God can't come on earth and do what he want to do. He needs some assistance. So that's why he developed the plan for you to receive salvation. And he gave you his word so that you can communicate to him. Because see, God knows that the devil is there too. And he knows that the devil is going to try to stop you from doing God's will. The devil is going to stop you, try to stop you from uh, assisting God in his plan and his will that he wants to do on earth. So God gave you his word and he gave us a name above every name. And what is that name? Jesus. So we got to use that name and we have to use his word. So therefore, putting on a new mind requires us to get some new information because I'm born again. So that means I got to talk different. I got to think different. I got to respond different. I got a different walk. I got to put on this light. And the way to put on this light, first of all, is to be born again. Secondly, is to renew my mind. Because if uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. All things now are of God. All things have become new. So I got to learn how to talk all over again. I can't talk like the world and get God to respond because talking like the world is not in faith. I got to learn faith. What is faith? Faith is you, the believer, believing trusting and having confidence in what God says in his word will come to pass that you do what it says but you do what it says without doubt and without fear because if doubt and fear comes in then you hinder God from moving because God only moves by faith he doesn't move by you crying by you belly aching he doesn't move based on your situation he moves based on faith in that situation let, let, let's go to Hebrews 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews 11. Verse 6. It says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. Why? For he that comes to God must believe that he is so that he exists and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Diligence, you're doing it on a regular basis. You're doing it all the time. Because remember, you're putting on a new man. So this life of faith is a lifestyle. It's not something we do just when we're in trouble, just on Sunday when we come to church and be with other believers of like faith. It's a lifestyle. So since it's a lifestyle, I got to renew my mind so that I can walk this walk. Because God says in the Bible that we're co-laborers. God has a part to play. We have a part to play. God can't move unless we assist him. Amen. We have to call on him. How do we do that? Through prayer. But when we pray, how do we pray? Pray his word. God says, put me in remembrance of my word. Father, you said in your word, ask and I shall receive. You said everyone that asks receives. So if I need something, all I have to do is ask for it. But I, when I ask, I have to believe, turn to Mark chapter 11. When I ask for it, I have to believe that I have it because it's a faith transaction. Now, see, most of us, most people walk by faith and they don't realize they've really been walking by faith. The number one thing most people walk by faith is going to work. You believe that they said that they're going to pay you every two weeks or every week. You believe you're going to get that check, right? So when Friday come and I don't have to check, we got a problem. I need to see somebody. I need to go in the office and talk to somebody with my money. Because you said, same way with God, Father, you said in your word. Let's go to Mark chapter 11, drop down to verse 22. And Jesus said, answering to them, 
have faith in God. Another way to say it is have the faith of God or have the faith like God. He says, for verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say to this mountain, mountain represents the challenge, the circumstance, the situation. Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass. He shall do what? He shall have. Whatsoever he says. So you have to believe that you receive the prayer that you pray to God before you even see the manifestation of it. That's called faith. It's the faith transaction. You need a new car. Ask God for it. He said everyone that asks receives. Ask and you shall receive. In fact, he says you have not because you ask not. But you got to understand in the faith transaction, you have to believe that you have it before you see it. So you have to see yourself driving down the street in the new Lexus, in the Cadillac or the SUV. It don't have to be a luxury car. It's whatever. He said, what's your thing you desire? So that leaves it open. OK. Now, we also looked at you must learn everything about living in faith every day because it's a lifestyle. We said that after the new birth. You're not the same person spiritually as you were before. Turn to 2 Corinthians 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. You're not the same person. We, we talked about it earlier. 2 Corinthians 5, drop down to verse 17. It says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a what? New creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And the first part of 18 says, and all things are of God. So if you're doing something that is not of God, you need to make the adjustment. If you expect God to respond to your faith walk, your faith walk's got to be in line with the word. See, his word is his will and his will is his word. You can't separate his will from his word because his word is his will. Amen. So you got to make the change. God is waiting for you to change. OK, it's we also looked at you were a sinner by birth from your mother's womb, born with a sin nature. But now you have the nature of God. So turn to uh, Psalm 51, I believe. Psalm 51. Yeah. Psalm 51. Psalm 51. <coughs> Psalm 51. Let's drop down to verse five. It says, behold, I was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Now, when it says that, it doesn't mean that your mother was over there fornicating with somebody. It means because you are a sinner because of how you were born. When everybody was born out of their mother's womb, they were born separated from God. So because you were born separated God, you were a sinner. Now you become born again. You're no longer a sinner. But sometimes we still commit a sin, right? OK, let's see why. First John, first John, chapter three, first John, chapter three. Drop down to verse seven, first John three. First John, not John, John, but first John in the back of the book. First John chapter three, let's drop down to verse seven. It says, little children, let no man deceive you. He that does righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that commits sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the son of God was manifested. Who are they talking about? Jesus. Why? That he might destroy the works of the devil. Verse 9. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. How does that happen? For his seed remains in him and he cannot sin and he cannot sin because he is born of God. Now, Christians still sin. Amen. Why do Christians sin? Christians sin because they allow their flesh to take over. 
See, the real you, let's look at man, the, the anatomy of man. Man is a tripart being. He's a spirit. He has a soul and he lives inside of a physical body. So because of that, God really designed the spirit part of man to lead the system of man. But if we don't equip the spirit part of man properly, then the flesh or the the body, the flesh, will lead the system of man. The Bible says the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So what we have to do, we have to feed our spirit on a regular basis. We have to feed our spirit. It's a spiritual feeding. We have to feed our spirit the word of God on a regular, daily basis. Why? Well, you're in the world every day, and you're feeding off what the world is doing. So you need to feed off of what God is doing. You need to feed your spirit. See, the feeding of your spirit must outweigh the feeding of your flesh. Otherwise, the flesh will lead the system of man. And that's why you sin, because your flesh don't want to do anything spiritual. See, your spirit is the one that was changed on the inside when you got born again. You were reconnected to God. But now you got to grow up because it said all things are new. So before we got saved, we were doing worldly things. So some of the worldly things, well, the worldly things have to disappear and we have to learn the godly things to do. So what we were doing before we got saved, we got to change. Some of the people we were hanging out with, we got to change. Everybody can't go on your journey. God has a journey for each and every one of us. He's placed gift qualities and talents in us. Everybody can't go down the road that you're going. Some of them you're going to have to leave on the bus stop. Amen. You got to leave them behind. They can't go. They can't go. Because see, they drag you down. They'll drag you down. They can't go with you. God is sending me over here. I got to go over here. Like he's in the story where he told Lot, he said, get away from your kinfolks. Why? Because he knew that if he stayed with them, they, oh, man, you ain't got to do that, man. Oh, man, you went to church last Sunday. You ain't got to go to church again. You go to church every Sunday. Well, the Bible tells you, since we're talking about that, turn to Hebrews chapter 10. And Jersey trying to preach. Go ahead, Jersey. She's trying to get that amen out. I hear you, Jerry. Amen. Jer uh, Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews 10. That's my grandbaby, y'all, Jerry. That's what I'm talking. Amen. Amen. All right. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. It says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some. So God says, don't stop going to church with other believers. That's all he's saying. Why? Now, it doesn't mean you can't listen to church on the radio. It doesn't mean you can't watch it on TV or watch it on the Internet. But there's a corporate anointing in the house. And you can't get that on the radio. You can't get that at home. He wants you to experience that in the building. Amen. Amen. And then sometimes people walk up to you and bless you in the building. When you're at home, you miss out on that. Amen. Amen. But it's that getting together with people of like precious faith. Amen. See, we, the Bible says we worship him. We, we, who is we? The body of Christ. That's us. Amen. We do it. Okay. We also learned that you now have given up the right to live according to your will. You've given up the right. When you give your life to Christ, you say, okay. Now, Christ is the Savior of the world, right? But is he your Lord? It says Lord and Savior. That means, okay, Jesus, I give my life to you. I'll do what you say. i do what you say. Okay. Proverbs. Turn to Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs 3. So if you're going to do what he say, then this scripture would fit you. And this is a start because you don't get it all at once. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, trust in the Lord with how much of your heart? All of your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Why not? He says, in all your ways acknowledge him and who will direct your path? He'll direct your path. God wants to direct your path because see, God knows the ending from the beginning. He got your path already laid out. So that's why he says, acknowledge him in all your ways, all your ways, all your ways. He'll tell you who to marry. 
He'll tell you who not to marry. Amen. He said, ask and you shall receive. God wants to be involved in what you be doing. He knows the booby traps. He knows the things that the devil has hidden from you. And he always make a way out. Uh, second, no, uh, first Corinthians 10. First Corinthians chapter 10. That's why you want direction from God, because God knows the road you're going down. Even if it's the wrong road, he know how to get you out of there. But when you're going down the right road, he knows the booby trap that the devil got set for you. First Corinthians chapter 10. Let's look at verse 13. It says, there is no temptation taken you. But such as is common to man. Meaning somebody else has been through the same thing. Somebody else has been through something worse. Some th somebody's been through something not as bad. But it says, but such is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer or not allow you to be tempted above that you are able. So he said he's not going to let you go through something where you just can't take it and you go shoot, shoot yourself in the head or you go jump off the building. So people that do that, they really don't have a relationship with God. Because see, when you got the word in you, the word of God will show up, give you the answer for that situation and give you direction. OK, verse 13, it says there is no temptation taking you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer or allow you to be tempted above that you are tempted above that you are able. But will with underline that, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. So God said, I know the way out. I already knew that the devil was going to attack you. But see, God wants to do this. Everybody look up. God gives everybody. <laughs> Turn to Romans 12 first. Romans 12. One book back. Romans 12. Romans 12, verse 3. Romans 12, 3. It says, for I say through the grace given to me to every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly. So you can think high, but don't get the big head, amen? Then you ought to think, but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man, what? The measure of faith. So now, look up. God gave everybody a measure of faith. So verse, uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, we show where he was always able to make a way for you to escape, right? So a lot of time, God allow you to go through something because he wants to stretch your faith, stretch your faith, because he know in a few months you're going to need some of this kind of faith. But he got to let you go through this stuff and count on him so that as you go through it, you grow through it. And then you're able to handle that thing that's going to happen to you a year later that he already know about. But he got to get you there. So he got to get you to trust on him. To get you out of it. That's why you have to put on a new man. Because you think different. And you respond different. Because you got some new information. That's why it's so important to renew your mind. Amen. We also learned that you must learn and begin acting. On submitting to God's will. Doing things according to God's plan and purpose for your life. Because he's got your life already tapped in. Now, if God has already got your life and the Bible says our life is hid in Christ, who we need to be hanging out with Christ. But we can't physically hang out with him, but spiritually we can hang out when we hang out in his word. We're hanging out with Christ. Amen. Because even though they say man wrote the Bible, God wrote the Bible. He wrote the Bible through the hand of man. Amen. Man doesn't have the intelligent level. See, if man was that smart, he wouldn't need God. Who made man? God. Amen. So that's why we follow him. We follow his lead. Now, let's go to our foundation scripture. Ephesians chapter four. Ephesians four. Give you your homework assignment for the rest of your life. Ephesians four. Drop down to verse 17. Ephesians four. 17 says. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you hereafter walk not 
as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of the heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lasciviousness. Lasciviousness is having no control to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ. If so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in who? Jesus is your assignment that you notice they said God is not going to do it. That you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, your manner of life, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So who got to put on the new man? Say, I do. I do. OK. Let's look at Colossians, Colossians chapter three, Colossians chapter three. Colossians 3, let's read starting in verse 1. It says, if you then been risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above and not on things on the earth. Why, Lord? For you are dead. <laughs> And your life is hidden with who? With Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. Mortify, meaning put to death. Therefore, your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God comes on the children of disobedience. In the which you also walk sometime when you lived in them. It's back in the day. But now you also put off all these. Anger, wrath, mal malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Say that again. Filthy communication out of your mouth. Verse 9, lie not one to another. See that you have put off the who? The old man with his deeds. See, the old man got deeds and the new man got deeds. Verse 10, and have put on the what man? The new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. So we got to put on the new man. We, 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 we got to put on the new man. Amen. Now. <sighs> Let me let me read this. I want to read this foundation scripture in the uh, New Living Version. I want you to listen to this flavor. Listen to this flavor. Ephesians chapter four. I'm going to read this. Y'all listen. It says, with the Lord's authority, I say, live no longer as the Gentiles do. For they are hopelessly confused. Their minds are full of darkness. They wander far off from the life God gives because they have closed their minds and hardened their hearts against him. They have no sense of shame. They live for lustful pleasure and eagerly practice every kind of impurity. But that isn't what you learned about Christ. Since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the spirit, Holy Spirit, renew your thoughts and your attitudes. Put on your new nature created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. Amen. That was in Ephesians. Now, let me read in Colossians. It 
It says, since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. It says, think about the things of heaven, not the things of the earth. For you died to this life and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all his glory. So put to death the sinful earthly things lurking within you. Have nothing to do with sexual immorality, impurity, lust, and evil desires. Don't be greedy, for a greedy person is an idolater, worshiping the things of the world. Because of these sins, the anger of God is coming. You used to do these things when your life was still part of this world. But now is the time to get rid of anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander, and dirty language. I should have got an amen on the dirty language. Praise the Lord. Don't lie to each other. Don't lie to each other. Don't lie to each other. For you have stripped off your old sinful nature and all its wicked deeds. Put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your creator and become like him. Amen. Amen. That's what we got to do. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Now, in our foundation scripture, we looked at the word new and we said the word new meant to create. It meant to make. It means not existing before. It means to be made, to be introduced, to be discovered recently or now for the first time. It meant to be fresh. And I like this one. It meant to just beginning to be used, just beginning to be used. Now, we looked at in our first point, we looked at the life that God has for me is found in his word. So your life is in Christ and Christ is the living word. So your life is in the word. The word is a lamp to your feet and a light to your path. So if you stay out of the word, you stumble, you get confused and you're easily tricked by the devil. OK. And we saw that in Proverbs 8, 32 to 36, that if you don't love the word, you actually love death because staying out of the word is your death. If the word of God is your life and if you're out of the word, it's your death and you don't even know it. Secondly, we looked at after the new birth, I must renew my mind. Must means absolute necessity. I must renew my mind. If the word of God is my life, if my life is in the word, then I must renew my mind. Let me show you something. Turn to Proverbs, Proverbs 3. I'm sorry, not Proverbs 3, Proverbs 18, Proverbs 18. Say, I got to renew my mind because... Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, my mouth speaks. So if I got the wrong stuff in my heart in abundance, the wrong thing is going to come out. Yeah. Yeah. See, Jersey say, amen. <laughs> Glory. Proverbs 18, verse 21. No, verse 20. It says, a man's belly. Proverbs 18, 21. I mean, 20 and 21. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. And with the increase of his lips, shall he be filled. 21 says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. You're going to have the result of what's coming out of your mouth. Now, most of the time that's good, but it could be bad. That's why you have to change your mind. You have to change the way you think. And the way to change the way you think is to renew your mind with God's way of doing and being right. Matthew 6, 33 says, seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness. So that's the first thing we have to do. We got to renew our mind to see what God's plan is. God didn't create you and say, hey, man, y'all just go on earth and just do whatever you want to do. No, he got a plan for you. But many people walk around like that. That's why he says in Hosea 4, 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. They don't know God. They don't, don't know his word. Don't know God. Don't know his word. And our third point we looked at 
I must learn to walk by faith to be successful and please God as a believer. We looked at Romans, I mean, uh, Hebrews eleven six says without faith is what? Impossible to please God. See, God only responds to faith. He don't respond to you crying. To you sitting there, I don't know what I'm going to do. The only reason why you say you don't know what you, you're going to do because you're not connected to God. Or you don't know enough word. If you got a problem, call another brother or sister in Christ. They may know some Bible says iron sharpeneth iron. We can learn from each other. But we got to be open to receive from each other. Amen. You know, if I know more than you, that's a blessing, not a curse. You know, you take advantage of that. I call, so, uh, uh, Pastor, Pastor Smith might know this. Let me ask him. Okay. It's not a thing about, it's no such thing as being dumb. You know, the Bible says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. That means I just didn't learn that thing. I can't walk in what I don't learn. Amen. So I got to learn. But it's on me to do it. Amen. It's on me to do it. Okay, let's uh, turn to James right quick. James, James chapter 1. James 1. So I must learn to walk by faith as the new man. The new man's got to walk by faith. James chapter 1, let's work, read verses 2 through 4. James 1, starting at verse 2, it says, My brother... Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation, meaning various trials, situations, circumstances, knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience. When it says that, it says the trying of your faith produces patience because faith is not magic. So you have to be willing to wait forever. If you're willing to wait forever, you won't have to wait that long, but you have to wait because it produces patience. Verse four, it says, but let patience have her Perfect work. So if you're impatient, it'll be imperfect. But let patience have a perfect work that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Meaning if you walk by faith and you stand on God's word and wait for him to bring it to pass, it'll come to pass. It'll manifest. And then you have the thing that you wanted. But it's a faith transaction. But while you're waiting for it to come to pass, what are you doing? Are you worrying? See, worrying is meditation without including God in the transaction. See, if you trust God, then there is no worry. Because, see, faith is always now. So, therefore, when you pray and ask God for something, the clock goes out the window because faith is always now. You just have to believe you receive it at the time you prayed, and then manifestation will come. That's why you have to have Belief, trust, and confidence in what God says in his word will come to pass that you do what it says without fear and without doubt. Because if you doubt, you're going to do without. Because, see, you have to eliminate doubt and fear because when you have belief, trust, and confidence in God's word, it opens up and triggers expectation. And if I got expectation, it won't be long before I have manifestation because I'm expecting it. I'm expecting the check to come in the mail. I'm expecting to get that phone call. Yeah, well, you got the job. I'm expecting, yeah, you got the car. I'm expecting, yeah, you was approved for the new house. I'm expecting it, you know. But while I'm waiting, I'm doing this, what they call this confession of faith. I thank you, Father. I believe I have it. I believe I have it. Not that I have it. I believe I have it because it's a faith transaction. So it's like this here. When you buy something uh, back in the day, you used to put it in the layaway, right? And you made payments on it, right? And then you finally got it out. Well, when you pray, you're putting it in the layaway, in God's layaway. So when you, I thank you, Father, I believe I have it. And tomorrow, I thank you, Father, I believe I have it. The next day, I thank you, Father, I believe I have it. So your confession of faith is making payments on that thing that you're praying for into a manifestation. See what I'm saying? Just keep speaking it, speaking it. When you start speaking faith, heaven goes to work. Hey, we got to get that to them because they believe in God for it. And see, the God knows when you're doing it with all your heart because God does what? He looks at the heart. 
So you tell him with your heart, are you really trying to do this? Do you really believe this? Are you really standing on his word? And God will show up to let you know that I heard your prayer. I got your back. And then another situation comes up. That's why sometimes he lets you go through something because he's trying to stretch your faith and stretch your faith and stretch your faith. Because when it goes for us believing for two hundred fifty thousand dollars, we need some faith. Amen. All right. All right. That's where we want to get you now. OK. New information. Well, let me get one more nugget off the off the faith. Faith is belief, trust, and confidence in God's word without fear or doubt, but with confidence that God's word will come to pass, that you obey his word with strong confidence. So you don't just want belief, trust, and confidence. That's where you start at. But we want to go to the next level. We're always talking about increase. Next level, strong belief, strong confidence, strong trust. See, when you do that, ain't no room for doubt. Ain't no room for fear. Because you got this strong belief. Why? That's what the testimonies come from. You had your test and now you got your testimony. So you already know God did it then. He can do it now. He did it for her. He can do it for me. Amen. Now, a new point, new information. The new man is a lifestyle of a new way of talking and using God's word. Okay. Now, listen here. Once you have a revelation that you have what you say, it is critical that you govern what comes out of your mouth because you can actually say the wrong thing. Like when you get the doctor report and they say, the doctor say, you've got cancer. No, it's a diagnosis. I don't receive that, doc. I understand what you're saying, but I don't receive that. I was diagnosed with cancer, but I believe I'm healed in Jesus' name because the scripture said Jesus took my infirmities, and he bore my sickness. And by his stripes, I'm healed. So I don't have anything. My life is renewed as the eagles. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. So you pick God's word up and you put it back on that diagnosis that the doctor gave you. Amen? Action. Now, it's critical that you must govern what comes out of your mouth. Why? Because you will always have what you say, good or bad, good or bad. Don't be talking about, I can't do this. The Bible says I can do all things through Christ. Amen. So why do you say I can't do this? Maybe because you don't know it. Another thing people say, I don't have any money. If your money is low, you say, I thank your father. You're filling up my wallet every day in Jesus name. It's faith transaction. You don't have to see it, but you have to say it. Amen. Because you have what you say. It may come no more, but if you don't say nothing, you're just, man, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. Forgot all about God says, ask and you shall receive. You don't know who's going to walk up to you and say, God told me to bless you with this. I was filling out an offering envelope one year, and I had, I think I had uh, $9. I had $9 in my pocket, and I said, well, I'm a, I need some gas. I'm going to put five in and keep the four for gas. The Holy Spirit said, put all of it in there. So I just changed my mind, just the change of my mind. I never said nothing, just the change of my mind. Okay, I'm going to put all of it in there. Somebody walked up to me. Amen. I mean, God told me to bless you with that. See what I'm saying? Just like that, just like that. See what I'm saying? So one, one time I uh, had a uh, bill collector call me. It was a bill that I owed. I forgot about it. And they left me messages, but I thought it was one of them scam messages. So I didn't pay attention. And I finally answered the phone one day. He said, yeah, Mr. Alexander, you owe us like $1,400, but we want to work with you. We want to give you a discount. If you just paid like $724, we can sell it now. And then the natural, I didn't have it. And I told him, I said, you know what? I really don't have it, but I, 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 can, I can give you $50 a month like that. And they said, well, he said, well, you know how they always say, well, let me, let me go talk to somebody. And they say, well, we can do 75. And I told them, I said, well, yeah, I said, $50 a month is really a strain. I said, I can do 50 a month. And he said, uh, uh, well, we really can't go that low. And I told him, I said, okay. I said, you do what you do, I do what I do. And I hung up, so I ain't true. Then about an hour later, my job called me. So yeah, this, this guy just got through calling, asking for a job verification. 
And the Holy Spirit say, they trying to garnish your check. And I called the dude back. I said, hey, man, you can call my job. Then they didn't let me talk to the man I was talking to. They give me the next person. He said, yeah, well, you know, um, you, 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 you negotiated with him and uh, y'all didn't come to a reasoning. So, you know, we're just taking the next step. We need job for verification because we're going to do garnishment. He said, but I tell you what, we'll work with you. We'll give you 24 hours. I said, okay, all right, thanks. So I had to go into prayer. Now he gave me 24 hours of going to prayer. And God told me what to do. And I made the phone call. God told me to call somebody. I made that phone call. And they, they said, okay, I'll call you back. That man called me back in about 15 minutes. He said, i give you $2,000. So I got $2,000 and I called the man back. I said, okay, now I'll be able to pick it up when I get off work. He said, no, because of COVID, we're not letting nobody in the office. So I said, okay. He said, we'll mail it out. I said, okay. And I called the bill collector back. I said, okay, I got the money. I called him the next day because they gave me 24 hours. I called him the next day. I said, okay, I got the money. I said, but I have to wait because uh, they are uh, going to send it out. They won't let nobody come in the office and pick up the money. And they said, okay. But first he gave me 24 hours. See, but he said, okay. You see what I'm saying? See? God works when you work the word, amen. Amen, the word works. Now, you must learn to respond to circumstances and situations with the word of God. Why? Because every concern known to man is in the word. You just have to get in your Bible and find it. If you can't find it, call somebody up. Amen. Next point. The new man must develop a lifestyle of praying, praying. The new man must develop a lifestyle of praying consistently, consistently. Turn to Luke, Luke chapter 18, Luke 18. When you're praying, you're communicating with God. You're communicating with God. And if you're communicating a God, what's happening? You're building a relationship with God. You're building a relationship. Luke 18 verse 1 says, And he spoke a parable to them to this end, that men ought to always, ought always to pray and not to faint. Faint meaning to lose heart or give up. If God got your answer, why would you not pray? Amen. And then we read Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. So if I'm acknowledging God in all my ways, that means I'm talking to him often. And if I'm talking to him often, now I begin to learn his voice. Because I'm talking to him often. Because I got a lot of ways. I need direction in this. I need direction in that. I need instruction here. I need instruction. I need to know what to do over here and what not to do. So all my ways, I'm acknowledging him. So I'm building a relationship. And if I build in a relationship, now I can hear him when I have a tough time or a, a, a difficult situation because I'm used to talking to him and listening to him. Amen. Go to 1 Thessalonians 5. First Thess five, First Thessalonians chapter five. First Thessalonians five says verse seventeen. It says, "Pray without ceasing." That means be ha have a consistent prayer life, have a time designated to pray to God. See, then you're building that relationship. It's like a meeting. You have a designated time to go to work, to start work, right? Have a designated time to maybe pray before you go to work or pray after work. Whatever you do, there's no certain time that you have to do it, but just do it. Amen. Amen. It's on you. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And what will happen? He'll direct your path. He'll direct your path. Now.
consistent, and it's the same point, consistent communication with God builds a relationship with the creator of heaven and earth. Consistent communication with God. See, it's the consistency that causes manifestation. Okay? Next point. The new man must develop a lifestyle of studying God's word. Studying God's word. That means not just reading, you're digging, you're looking this up, you're looking that up, you're looking this up, you're looking that up, you're writing this down, you're writing that down. Amen. Second Timothy 3.16. 2 Timothy 3.16. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Why? And it is profitable for doctrine, which is good teaching, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Why? That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished to all good works. It's for your whole life, to life, change your whole life. Just uh, for time's sake, write down Joshua 1.8, Psalms 119, 105, Romans 15.4, and Proverbs 4.20-23. In summary, we learn putting on the new man in Christ has to do with total submission to God and his way of doing and being righteous. Matthew 6, 33. Secondly, the new man must understand that his new life is hid in Christ and his word. The new man must understand that his new life is hid in Christ and his word. Colossians 3 one through three, Proverbs four, twenty through twenty three, and Proverbs twenty twenty four. Proverbs twenty twenty four says, Man's goings is of the Lord. How then can a man understand his own way? God said, You don't know what you're doing. I created you and I already got the plan for your life. So why are you doing what you're doing? And you ain't asking me. Amen. Next in summary, the new man now has to develop a lifestyle of a new way of talking, praying to God, studying God's word, responding with God's word, and getting direction and instruction from God's word. Why? Because God's word is your life. I say that again. The new man now has to develop a lifestyle of a new way of talking, praying to God, studying God's word, responding with God's word, and getting direction and instruction from God's word. Because God's word is your life. Proverbs 4.13. Now, the new man makes the difference in his life. The new man also makes the difference in the life of others and then the atmosphere. So when you're a new man, when you come into the room, the atmosphere changes. You might not know it, but it does change because they recognize the newness of you. Amen. Amen. Let me say it again. The new man makes the difference in his life, the life of others, and in the atmosphere. So when you enter the room, things are about to change. Ephesians 4.24. And finally, the new man now begins to walk by faith. And must begin to trust and obey God because of these five things. Because the promises of God are received by faith. 
the problems of man are resolved by faith. The potentials of man are reached by faith. And the provisions of man are realized by faith. And your faith determines where you are going. I say that again. The new man now begins to walk by faith and must begin to trust and obey God because the promises of God are received by faith. The problems of man are resolved by faith. The potentials of man are reached by faith and the provisions of man are realized by faith. And your faith determines where you're going. Amen. In Jesus' name, did you receive it? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your word. All right, those that are viewing, we don't want to cut this broadcast off without giving you an opportunity to start your walk as being a new man. And that starts with giving your life to Jesus. In Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, it says that if thou shalt believe in thy heart, believe in thine heart, that God raised Jesus from the dead and you confess that with your mouth, you shall receive your salvation. But with the heart, man believes into righteousness and with the mouth, confession is made into salvation. So repeat this prayer after me and everyone in the room to be on one accord. Dear God in heaven, I come to you in the name of Jesus. You said in your word, if I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth, that Jesus was raised from the dead, I would be saved. I believe in my heart and I'm confessing with my mouth that Jesus is the son of God and he died for my sins and he was raised from the dead for my justification and I receive him right now as my Lord and Savior. You also said in your word, that if I would ask for Holy Spirit, you would give him to me. So I'm asking you now to fill me with Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come inside me. Lead me. Guide me. Anoint me. Empower me. And direct my life. So I may live for God. Reveal to me God's plan and purpose in my life so I may live according to God's word in Jesus name amen thank you father for saving me and for filling me with Holy Spirit and for revealing to me by faith God's plan for my life in Jesus name I pray amen all right praise the Lord well if you prayed that prayer for the first time you are now born again and Filled with Holy Spirit and God will reveal to you his plan for your life so that you can walk in newness of life and be the new man that he needs to operate in the earth realm so that God's will can come to pass in the earth realm. Once again, I'm going to thank you for tuning in and I want to pray a, a benediction prayer for you. Father, we thank you and praise you for your word. Those that tuned in, I thank you, Father, that they received your word with gladness. I thank you, Father, that they will change to the new man that you need them to be, Father. And for their obedience, Father, I pray that you pour your blessings to the life, open doors of opportunity to help them, lead them and guide them in all that they say and do via Holy Spirit. If they need healing, Father, I pray that you heal them. If they need a Financial blessing, I pray that you open doors of opportunity to bless them financially. If they need deliverance, Father, I pray that you deliver them, Father, in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, for meeting the needs of your people spiritually, mentally, physically, and financially. In Jesus' name. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you, which is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. Once again, thanks for tuning in. And this message, if this message has been a blessing to you and you desire to sow a seed, call the number at the bottom of the screen, 314-867-1894 and sow your seed. And we stand in agreement with the hundredfold return on your giving in Jesus' name. This is Pastor Herman Alexander Sr. And 
We'll see you on the next broadcast. Keep God first in your life and he'll change it like never before. In Jesus name, I'll see you in the next broadcast. Bye bye. Amen. Amen.